Hey, what's good? Your boy No Love just hitting you once again. Got another video for you this time taking uh, the homeboy rap route. I've uh, been going through the archives and I figured, hey, what the hell, I'll make a video on it. So um, here's a bunch of flyers. I'm actually going to show you this is just a small stack. I got like bags and bags of these old school flyers, but uh, these are the old school homeboy rap flyers we used to pass out back in the days. Everybody would make them. Uh, man, this was the promo right here. You'd make, you know, 10,000, 5,000, whatever, how many you were making, go hit San Jose, go hit Oakland, San Francisco events, and you're just passing out flyers left and right. Um, that's how you did it. You reached the fans, you got out there. It wasn't, you know, like you sit from home and just start doing what you do now. Like you really had to get out there and get it. So uh, you would see these things on the floor. People would say, oh yeah, that's cool. Toss them on the ground, toss them in the garden. You'd walk up and down the strip in San Jose and just see flyers from all the shit you just passed out and people just threw them on the ground. <laughs> So it would really be like that back then. So uh, me, I used to keep a flyer every time I'd go to like Rasputin's or somebody would give me one on the strip or something like that. Or, you know, I used to sell homeboy rap. So I would network with these dudes and they would give me stacks of flyers. So I would always keep a few. And uh, down the road, you know, I, I always figured they'd end up being valuable because, I, you know, like I've said before, when I was younger, I would see people with these old school like posters from 1950s music events and old boxing events. And I'm thinking, damn. Man, those are so sick but they're worth so much money and i was like well i should start saving the stuff i have now because nobody's going to be able to get this stuff later and sure enough you know these posters and these flyers um they ended up being worth a couple bucks i've i've sold flyers for easily over a hundred dollars just for you know one single flyer like one of these things right here um just really depended on you know the content of it who it was uh some of the most popular stuff is obviously like woody speedy low sir dino dark room that stuff always sells so um um, I've always collected them, I've always sold them, you know, traded them to people, done stuff like that. So almost like baseball cards. But uh, yeah, now, you know, they're almost impossible to find for most of these things unless the artist saved a few, but most of them didn't. They tossed them out. They didn't think there'd be any value in, in them. So yeah, like I said, you would just see these things on the street and, you know, people toss them in the garbage. So um, I saved a few. So let's go through and see uh, what we got. All right, this one came out of San Jose back in the day, hustling city to city. It was San Jose 408 area. Um, I remember getting this one. I think my boy Al Beasy, he told me about this back in the day, because if I'm correct, he might have been on the album. So 2001, Dugout Records, 408. So yeah, nice cover right there, flip side. And the other thing too, to save money, a lot of people used to go in, like two artists would go in, um, they get one side, you get the other, and then you know they'd be passing your stuff out in your area, wherever you went, you're passing that stuff out. So, you know, it worked out for both parties. Yep, see how busy right there. So yeah, that's um, that's who put me on this one. Fortune Enterprise Presents The Saga Begins. Let's see. F-E, that stands for F everybody. You know, I gotta watch watch all the F-bombs. And now they, they hit me hard when um, I start cussing all the time. So coming July, it's probably 2001 as well. B-E-D, fortune-ent.com. What's this one? Courage. Oh, this is out of Oakland, I believe. Let's see, Communities United for Restorative Youth Justice. Yeah, so let's see. Any year time on this one? No, the cafe. I don't know if they still have that over there. Drop a comment if you know. If you got Oakland. Ah, 2001. No love gear. Yep, this was uh, me and my boy Ant's uh, clothing company back in the day. So this was, man, we promoted this hard. Sold a lot of shirts let's see hats we did custom stuff when um like fitted hats and all that were big we dropped the uh the customs right there we had two different designs hella different shirts the lanyards those ones did hella good back in the days man we sold so many of the people still ask for those to this day hey you got them red bandana lanyards all out man i don't i, I think i have one like hanging in the garage or something but that's it man i think I got it from my son that's steve man if you know Fremont, this is right behind Kennedy High School right there, the where you come out um, when you're done, you know, coming out of the high school and you're crossing to uh, 7-Eleven right there. Yeah, that's that little steps right there. That's where the famous Fat Steve photo shoot was. One of my um, first couple beats that was on the album was on here. I think the first one was on Plot's um, Spit Before You Shine. And then uh, I was on, I think, uh, was it? 
What's the dang? What was the song? I'm a gangster. That was it. Yeah, old school stuff. Homeboyrap.com flyer right there. So what's on? okay? Yeah, I remember this one. Uh, this was on the flip side right here of the big old so low. 114% Gangster the Mixtape Volume 2 for life. So always one of my favorite mixtapes right here. He was the dude who first told me about mixtapes back in the days. Man, he like he he was listening to 50 Cent and stuff like and you know you would watch MTV and see all these like rap shows about rap and all that stuff. And he told me, yeah, like they make mixtapes that rap over Main Street beats. I'm like, what? Like rapping over Main? Are you serious? He goes, yeah, they, they make them. They sell them for like five bucks to just promote you. And he's like, I'm gonna drop one. And that's when he dropped part one. And yeah, I, I gave him a few beats for that one. I think I got a shout out on that maybe. But yeah, I was on that album cover that was in front of my house. The boy Rhino. Um, that was Big Oso's old school caddy right there. Uh, him and Fat Steve, the Around Our Way. They did that photo shoot be, uh, over by Safeway in Irvington right there by the tracks. Um, this was the old school homeboy rap stuff. I made this collage back in the day. Um, I made like an actual collage and then um, my homeboy Martin from South Hayward, he drew this right here. Uh, he drew up this logo, hooked it up. Um, I, I forgot who did the graphics on here. Let's see. Oh, Felipe did them. Uh, Newark Alifas, and then he took like basically my idea from uh, the collage I made of this homeboy rap thing, and then he freaking, you know, he um, ended up doing the actual graphic. But yeah, he made this flyer. Flip side was he also that was over in Irvington Square, I believe, over there by the railroad track. So yeah, it's just a good album. Fat Steve, we come, and this is the uh, artwork actually. Let's see, four panel, two panel, yeah, four. All the homies right there. I think that was in Newark right there. Uh, Might have been Ash Street Park. Not too sure. Newark homies drop a comment. All the old school stuff. Man, shh, look at all them titles. RP, man. Tito Beast, my boy. This is the CD tray for the Hood Stars album right here. Block Hustling. See, I, I probably lost the... Um, like front artwork and just ran with it so uh this is the higher records value pack right here so this is the ins the cd tray insert right here for the back of the box shows all three albums on there let's see this one felipe newer califa this is one of his flyers right here your local boulevard cruiser supposed to drop a magazine i remember being at the meeting with him uh it was me him some other dude like he was into low riding and then tragic um a chick from uh san francisco um she was like uh, i think she was supposed to help with this she was like she, a sick ass photographer uh at the time so that thing's hella sick right there in newark felipe always dropped the heat Connected Ink Compilation. Lil Coner. Always dropping albums back in the day. He dropped so many albums back in this era. This was the uh, one went to Kansas right there. This is cool. Good times, man. She got some got some stories for out there, man. We, we made it happen out there. Hell yeah, that's good times. Can't even tell you all the stories. I'll just show you the fire. The Super Bash in Fremont. Yeah, Ray Love, AWAX, Never, Lil Wino, man, they had everybody low down. Good Felons, Gorilla Pits, Metal Mouth, Big Tone, Lil Coner, Tito B, Big Oso, Fat Steve, Mad Dog, Young Luck, V Dub, 14 Caliber, Zach One, Mousy Plot, Young Steve, man, popping. Fat Steve right there, Coner, Steve, was this when they had Ray Love there? I can't remember. Don Changalini stuff, I believe. Let me see. Yep, Don Changalini mixtape volume one. President of the game. Extended family. If I was a fifth. Little Coner, second solo coming soon. That was a real good album right there. That Red is what I made of. That's one of my favorite tracks on there. Our records value pack. Tri City, man, that's an old school store. If you're from Fremont, you know that store right there. Let's see, 
Bald Out Hardhood Classics. Tower Records, Warehouse, Virgin Mega, FYE. Coney used to get in all stores. He got good distribution, man. He used to work some deals. Golden State Warriors. That was a good cover. I like that he did that one. <laughs> Freaking Changalini, boy. Yeah, he even got my old school homeboy rap logo on there. Urban Life, Rap Bay. Yeah, he even he hooked me up on there. That's the old school one. 17 with a Thiz right there. 2006. Man, old school stuff. It's a good album. See, this was Idaho. I was there at this. Oh, no, no, no. This is Corning. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I, I got put these videos on my YouTube uh, when we were there. Tito B, he was, he was clowning. Yeah, the uh, VIP area for us, it wasn't very VIP. It was just kind of like the back storage area where they had all the chairs and shit like that. So, yeah, that was uh, <laughs> freaking Tito. Yeah, that was a good event. Though. It was cracking out there, man. The homies came out and supported. We actually packed that little spot. Small now, cry later. The Hustlers Club. Devotion. 2017. Thomas. Bernard. Bernardino Roofing. All right. Shout out Bernardino with the old school on there, too. It wasn't playing. Got the Weddles right there. The old school. Man, that's what I'm talking about. Ah, big old solo. Just another day. Woody, Speedy Loke, Mousy, Insane, Big Razor, Mental Illness, Plot, Fast Steve, Tito B, Gangsta Reese. Good album right there. Man, that fool used to spit. That was, I remember when he spit his first rap, man. He was right there over on Fremont Sundale right there. He said, hey, man, I wrote this rap right here. You want to hear it? I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. Let me hear that. And, uh, oh, yeah, I'm going to show you something. Most people don't know. You, you'll never notice it unless you know about it. Bugsy did the artwork on here. Stars Limb Presents, Old School. This is, yeah, what, 2003 right here. See Big Oso Loke right there? Turn it sideways. Ah, hidden messages, subliminal. Bugsy used to always hide stuff. <laughs> he was, man, look at his artwork. That fool used to hide stuff. Mental illness, money clips, RTS, Tito B. Another one for the homies. Rest in peace to my boy right here. Dakota at the, I think they used to call it the wall over there. All the homies used to kick his little spot in Dakota's little corner back in the day. Man, they used to be deep over there. You don't want to make a U-turn over there. Affiliation, Louis Loke, Big Body, Fat Joe Bandit, everybody. Tito B, Lil Coner, Lil Raider, Big Osa, Lil Keek Dog, Albizi, T Nutty, Spice One, Mac Mall, Chente, Ponchalini, and yeah, Philippine Music. Alright. 707 Summer Bash, Lil Raider, Lil Kona, Tito B, Never Sober, Insanity, Chino, Montana. This was in 2008 over in Redwood Valley. 10 bucks pre-sale, 20 at the door, no drama, no drugs, alcohol, gang attire. Live performances, Lil Raider, Chino, Montana. Yep, got my boy, Insanity. DJ Panoy, man, that is okay. So that was way up in the 707. DJ Panoy, man, Ukiah, that's old school right there. They used to sell hella shit. I think I only went there maybe one time, but that was a sick spot right there. Comment if you remember that spot. DJ Panoy. Cali Duggan. Speedy Loke, RIP to the homie. This is a sticker right here. So you see it peels back right there. Yeah, we get these, go stick them on the walls, pass them out. But I ended up with a few that I kept. So sold a bunch of them. Man, I've sold these things for quite a few bucks. But ghetto ball and compilation. This is the one that never dropped right here. This would have been the third album. But uh, Bugsy, you know, as as the quote goes, Bugsy's lagging. Yeah, look, look at all the names. Woody, Lil' Kona, Hurricane J, Mousy, JT, Big Osolo, 14 Caliber. Man, I'm telling you, would have been... Would have been something nice. It's, it's in the it's in the vaults, but you know, the vault's getting rusty. Lil' Coner coming soon, 2003. This was, I think this was the original one right here. Yeah, this was like the original cover. And then it got switched over. Let me see. there Because there's like three or four different flyers from Mama Tried back in the day. This was like when he first got out. Look at that. No tattoos. He ain't got nothing, man. Look at the sun just all on his actual skin. See, man, flyers, you have so many different 
uh, versions of uh, one album on flyers is Bugsy because he did his own artwork. He used to switch them up. His flyers are always the sickest though. I always like this fool's flyers because yeah, he he did some. Man, they'd be shining. They always stood out. I'm a stronger and harder. Speed low, Cali Thuggin, 2004. Legacy continues. And the infamous Cali Thuggin. Um, well, it was a VHS at the time, but. Yeah, now uh, I guess it would be Blu-ray, digital, YouTube video. I'm not too sure, but are you ready? Yeah, look at that. That's old school. Look at all the inside little artwork. That's a wall and decoder. That was uh, like, that's where all the homies used to kick it right there. That was the spot. Was it Fifth and E? Can't remember. Dakota, drop, drop a comment. Tito B and Thugsy. Also in the house, Lil Coner plus special guest. All right. This one was sick. I was there, the venue. Went there twice to Idaho for shows, and they showed us nothing but love out there, man. I got nothing but love for the homies out in Idaho. Cool-ass dudes, man. Straight up. Yeah, Tito B, Thugsy, Lil' Coner. Man. Ooh, look at that. Gotta put that one to the side. Tito B, that's uh, from that event right there, the venue, 2008, May 30th, 7 p.m. I think this was the second time we went out there, and when we were there, it was like nothing but just homies out there, straight up gangsters, everybody out there banging in the spot, and you know, just everybody's cool, respectful, the homies for the most part respectful when they're around each other, and the lady of the venue came up and said, excuse me, I, I just want to say, I thought it was going to be so like, you know, People told me to watch my back for this, but everybody's been so respectful, so nice. This is one of the best events I've ever thrown. Like, yeah, so, you know, that's how it is. The homie's respectful. So, yeah, you know, they they recognize it. Lady was heck a nice the old lady. Show some love. Let's see. Oh, this is the East Coco Records Presents, May 22nd. All-Star Jam, Woody, RBL, Posse, oh man, let's see, Shadow, B-Dog, Louie Lou, Big Tone, Megan, Lil Coner, Big Osalok, Never, V-Dub, Fat Steve, Keek Dog, Master, uh, Miss Master Steel, Lil CS, and many more, The Gaslighters, man, I think that's the one Tito got arrested at, I can't remember, man, why he don't like going to Gilroy he he did not like going to Gilroy at all he hated passing through Gilroy I got another story for that uh this was the Milpitas the great mall signing right here so yeah this one was cracking right here we had everybody there man I had all the homies show up the the place at the mall media play they said hey uh you all the stuff you bring in it does really good you could do a signing with these guys say yeah you know we try to get all these artists in sure enough I brought them all in and man it was cracking. We did good there, man. We were selling CDs to all the artists, uh, to you know, directly to everybody there, and it, it was cool. It was cracking, man. Everybody showed up. Uh, you see all the names on there. It was, it was a good event right there. But this one, the original, we had to make some last-minute ones, and so I thought quick and when I printed a bunch of those and <clears throat> Speedy Low Cali Duggan. This is the album artwork, but it folded out into a poster. Dude Satan from Dakota, <laughs> uh, Louis Loke, Lil Connor, Tito B, Ace of Spitz, Mick Moss, uh, Young Stephen Moore, good near you. Young Rue, yeah, neither of these two albums came out, I don't believe. Both these dudes are from Dakota, but I don't think any of those albums ever dropped right there. Don Changolini, 4000. Man, this cover gets me every time, because I'm like, God damn, man, fuck you be getting your bananas, Changolini? God damn, that's a big-ass fucking banana. <laughs> fuck. Oh, man. The 14th wonder of the world, Don Changolini, 4000. That's the homie right there. Shout out to DC. Ride of Thugs 2001. Got all the out. 18 with a bullet. 17 reasons. 200% shady. Mr. Key. Lou Loke. Is that the Gamblers? Flip side was Speedy Loke. October 9, 2001. So this one, uh, he was still live and networking with um, the homies in Frisco. Like, uh, who is he? With uh, Ghetto Line Productions. 
114% game. That's his first album right there that he dropped, Doug Affiliate. Remember when I met him at the Vallejo Street Show out there, and uh, we networked. I bought a bunch of albums out there, and that yeah, was cool, man. Good dude right there. I used to be able to push his uh, units when I get them. Matter of fact, I used one of his tracks off of 114% game for uh, Northside Rollers, I believe that was. This is the first one right here, the original one. So the, he had two different presses, the white album and the black album. That's a little Beatles thing he did right there. So you know him, he's gonna do white album and a black album. R.P. to my boy. This one never dropped right here. And good cover. Man, they robbing old boy right there and getting them. And let's see, Kings Inn and Fremont, man. That was the bar right there. They used to have the most popping rap shows. I recorded some of that stuff on from the streets of the studio and uh, in the beginning when you see them performing, I think for the little Conor Mama um how was it? Uh, Sun Don't Worry, I think. Oh man, what was it? Ah, I can't remember. Drop it in the comments if you know it. Kings in. All right, so had a little uh, heat up on the camera right there. I didn't realize we were going so long. What are we hitting over like 21 minutes? Damn, I didn't realize there was this many flyers, but you no, know, we got to keep pushing. Uh, this Latin, and, and matter of fact, here's the here's the part where you're gonna want to stick around because once we get to the end, it's gonna be worth it. I got something at the bottom that you're really gonna want to see, and it's the the infamous one I've talked about. So stick around. This Latin right here, all the old schools, November 21st. My boy Tito B right there. I'm on the bottom. The, um, let's see, this Latin DVDs right there. Jimmy Rose's. Uh, what's that? Freddie Chingas, Mr. Key. Doug Z. Little cat from back in the day from EPA. They go, rup, rup, rup. Used to always do that. That was what they do in EPA. <laughs> that was like their thing right there. <laughs> Uh, he used to make all the flyers, though. He used to make beats and flyers, and uh, he was rapping back in the day. Man, this is... Shh, look at that. The Lil' Kona ringtones right there with rap face. With the sidekick, man. These... This fool was legendary on the sidekicks. Like, we'd go driving somewhere, he'd pull out the sidekick, and he'd just hit, like, MySpace and say, all right, hey, we're going to be in your city. And that was, like, the first times when we were, like, promoting online like that, like, social media on the go, because th this is when it first started happening with this kind of stuff. So, yeah, we were, you know, hey, Conor, uh, hit, hit all your MySpace, let them know we're going to be in Visalia at the mall. Hey, we're going to be out the mall in about an hour and a half. You know, let them know. And we didn't have GPS, so we just kind of figured by the time we got there, there'd be homies walking up and down the malls and stuff looking for us. So, yeah, that was that old school, man. Unknown, 2007 DRF. Put the com logo on there. That was the Ben Davis looking one right there. I, I had him do the colors that look like Ben Davis, so... Darkroom Familia, North Pole. Homeboyrap.com. Yeah, baby. They always show love, man. DRF was always hella cool. Shout out to them. Mad Dog, the next chapter. Old school one. That was a cool album, man. He, boy, did that, yeah, that was a... He had his first one. Was it Dangerous? That was one that had Mac Dre on it. And this was the second one, I believe. Yeah. And then he had a third one. I could have swore he had three albums. Oh, no. I'm getting old, so. This one right here, Northern Cali Stomp. What you don't know is, boop, there's me right there in the background, just chilling. My brown dickies and my white long tee. Yeah, we drove out there. This is where I got the footage on uh, from the streets to the studio out in Sacramento. Everybody was low riding at that park, and Mad Dog was by that hopping 6'4". That was that event right there. Get old ballin'. I think, yep, see, remember I said there's different versions of flyers and people would always just, you know, um, pretty much just keep dumping flyers. Like if you did artwork, you were pumping out flyers and Bugsy did artwork, so this fool was always pumping out flyers. But yeah, he, like I said, he had some of the sickest ones and he dropped all the logos, little hidden stuff. He always dropped something a speedy. Every album he's ever dropped, there's like some, uh, a hidden Mickey of Speedy in there somewhere or, you know, like a Speedy logo or something like that. Like any, anything, he, he's always done that. Like that fool was notorious for doing that. So I'm not sure what's hit. No, I mean, you can't really hide anything. You got to be up front with it on here. But yeah, he always had hidden stuff. And I can't see what album that one is, but... 
the hell is that? Can't remember, that one never dropped. Was that OG Dave? I think that was maybe the OG Dave album right there. Yeah, he did like an album cover for him. Ilfoncino, Lil Coner. Um, see, that's... What's, no, I can't remember. Let's see. I haven't seen the Lil Coner album in a while. Funk on site. Stack Life. That's the homie right there. He used to be at uh, Rasputin's right there, man. Old school. He was cool, man. He was always buying off of us, man. Send $12 cash only. That's when people send money in the mailbox. You'd, I'd go to the mailbox. There'd be all these envelopes cash in them. Like, hell yeah, baby. It's a good album right there. I always liked uh, Funk on Sight. Getting closer to the bottom. Screwed and Chop, 17 Reasons. That was a good one. I used to listen to Screwed and Chop back in the day. When I first read about um dj screw i started listening to his stuff and i actually liked it and i was like man this shit's sick and then when julio he was like the first homie and the first person like norcal to start doing screwed and chop stuff and he did this one and like the ride of thugs album and they sounded sick screwed and chop beltway eight i think did them flip side on this you had cali thuggin right there yeah featuring never before seen videos concerts interviews and the hardest footage from the streets of cali starring rbl posse speedy loke lowdown yuck mouth mousy tater tay of 11 5 mitchy slick sir dino and the darkroom familia 14 caliber ballin ass dame young droop tension uh who else young choppa big things twomp nino black and brown street low magazine low riding with jj thc albz bugsy 187 and more man this fool didn't even put my name on there <sighs> tripping dvd and vhs fan mail yep this is when they had the um uh, they were taking pre-orders the infamous pre-orders oh man that was pre-order gate right there that was, that was infamous times man I, I can't even go into detail on that one right now but if you know you know so we might touch that one in another video one day mousy coming soon produced by bugsy speedy low coming 2003 i always like the bright green stuff on this look good world is a ghetto right there yeah, this was the different Lil' Coner cover that never dropped. Mama Tried. Yeah, this was supposed to be. I think that was his ride right there. Was that the homie from Northside? I can't remember. Fans, demos, females. Yep, send it all in. Calendars. This fool was always working on some. All right, the insert. Yeah, CD tray insert right there. Had a few of those when the uh, album dropped. I think we knew the press guy, or I might have, I don't know. No, was this the one I got pressed? No, Bugsy did it himself on this one. And then, um, yeah, I usually had like extra ones or, you know, album case would break or something. So another Felipe flyer. See, he would always have sick flyers too because he did artwork and graphics and all that stuff. So, man, this was, uh, yeah, his photo exhibit was this one, Tracy. Yeah, I did a video, I think, on some of this stuff in here. So it's a good event right there, man. Cool folks so that's one of my good friends right there i don't i don't say homie i say friends because that's one of my friends so ah this was when me and t uh tito were at this one right here i remember it was tito b was out there and then he was with that uh dj tito bell and he was like doing it i got him on video and he said i'm tito b and i'm tito bell and i'm tito and it was going back and forth and <laughs> that was cool like that but yeah this was the uh pass right there you see the stamp in there mr fab good event right there See, ah, from Tito B when he'd be performing. So I got the little performer badge right there. Getting closer, getting closer. Um, oh, shit, did I? Yeah, liquor store slaps. I didn't flip on this one. Hustle Boys. This Latin, yeah, that was a group from uh, this Latin. One. See, oh, this is the Manteca one right here. So this is the one from uh, Body to Body where they made Tito take his red hat off and made everybody take off all their red. Uh, that was that event right there. If you seen Body to Body or DVD, yeah, that was when that one went down. They made us take all our shit off. All all the Mexican dudes, all the, the homies walked around, made everyone take off the red. But if you was a Mexican, like if you were white, they didn't even trip. I, don't, I had video of people in red just walking around. They seen some little Mexican kid in red. He was probably like 12. They were ready to start making him take his shit. Obviously, the cop looking at him. So, all right, getting close. Getting close to, oh, hey, here we go, Speedy Low, Cali Thuggin. This was the first album right here, but it was a postcard. 
Um, I used to actually send these to homies that were locked up back in the day. I would just like put all my, like, you know, my info or something up there, cross that info out and then put their stuff right here, send it over to them. And yeah, they'd be all juiced to get this, man. Shit, I used to always send these when we had them, man. I'd get a stack of them, send them out. Northern Ghetto Boys, this was the sticker right here. So yeah, this is super rare sticker pops off the back march 14 2000 right there this one had everybody you already know classic album right here this was one of those ones that had anthems on it and everybody was dropping get line productions put it out i've actually been to that spot in uh frisco where they did all that mousy took me out there back in the day showed me the location by the tracks and all that stuff um they're gonna do like a try to do i think a part two or something or like i remember went over there and did a photo shoot with a bunch of homies from frisco um i'm in that one actually in the back too you see me if you ever look at it i think pistol c um chino r.i.p um who else is over there like mousy all the homies from frisco was it the deep sleep camp there's like hella homies over there and they took a picture for it but yeah i ended up being in the back of that one World is a Ghetto, 2001. Oh, this is the Northern Ghetto Boys. This is uh, the actual flyer right here. So they did a flip side with Speedy Low. Because, yeah, because Ghetto Line put this album out. And they put this one. So, yeah, that was a good double side promotion right there. It's kind of rare on this one. Because, yeah, it's got both of the Ghetto Lines when they put them out. And here is the infamous one. This is the Woody Demons in My Sleep. I'll take it out right here had this one a long time so it's the woody demons in my sleep um it's a sticker so it's like a full page but it, yeah you see it um sticks up pulls off right there and you would stick this on like you know fools would stick them on walls or whatever you know whatever you're promoting at but um he signed this one and sent it to me but to jose stay up homie woody um problem is my name ain't Jose. My name is Jesus. So <laughs> I hit him up. I was like, hey, bro, um, I asked you to sign that, but you spelled my name wrong, bro. It's not my name. It's like, oh, my bad, homie. You know, I thought it was, uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's all good, bro. So, but I've always kept it. It's a funny story to tell people. They, <laughs> they usually laugh about it. Everybody gets a kick out of it. But I always liked it just because, you know, he signed it for me, but it had his hand styles on there. Like, he had, like, you know, the homie hand styles and stuff like that. You know, you, like, you see my videos before where I'm teaching and showing or you know talking about different hand styles but his was that like that hand style looked like he he moved fast on his so yeah because you could see his he goes pop 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 and then he goes straight up flares it out over 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 deep and bam so yeah it looks like his was kind of a fast one right there um i like his style i'll try to do his name sometime i like that because yeah it's pretty sick man like his, his hand style was just it just trip you know um and his, you can always tell, like, with his autograph, you can always tell his autograph with you if when you've seen it. Like, somebody tried to fake it, it's a hard one to fake. Like, I've seen it before, and I could tell you if that's Woody's autograph. So, and that's exactly how he writes right there, so. And then, this one, someone did this, um let's see i got this in salt lake city utah the homie chub g gave this to me he said hey man you go out you're from cali here if you ever run into woody's mom give this to her and i was like all right yeah it's all good man and you know so i actually um had davina she hit me up and i told her to send this image over and um send it to um his mom and yeah but i've just never been able to get in contact with her but i remember the dude who drew this like this is because this is actually like a remix of the actual logo because he's pouring out the the 40 and you know it's basically damn near the regular logo but just pouring out the 40 and he did a really good job on it man like really props to dude like he got down on this dude uh does tattoos too i believe because i remember i think he did the homie mo's tattoo and um yeah so he gave me this is the original one right here the original paper he did um drew it out on and uh, they had shirts of these back in the days probably only like 50 shirts they made i ended up with some i think i sold my last one that i have just because it didn't fit me anymore but uh yeah they're super collector's editions man it's like hella hard but yeah i got these rare ones right here so thought i'd share everything with you this is like i said this is just a small stack i got stacks like brr, all the way up um i got hell of them man so you know maybe i'll drop another video but this one's probably dropping into 30 minutes on this video and this is just like i said a small stack right here and you can imagine i got them like just man oh, arms open so 
yeah i'll drop another one and uh, let me know if you want to see some more stuff if you like the stories if you remember any of them so yeah i appreciate you watching much love and i'll catch you on the next one